Welcome to the session Scratching on Managing Amazon EKS Clusters with SEK, Crow, and Argo CD. We are going to see how you can leverage Kubernetes API to create new environments and automatically deploy add-ons and workload into it. My name is Sébastien Lamont, and I will walk you through a nice demo. What problem are we trying to solve with these new tools? You all know the different pipelines you can have to build and deploy your applications. What infrastructure as code are you using? Maybe CloudFormation or CDK? Most of my customers are using Terraform for building the environment infrastructure, creating VPC, EKS clusters, and all the necessary AWS infrastructure resources. Also, many customers are also using Helm Chart to package and deploy their applications into Kubernetes. But once it is deployed, managing individual parts is still left to the DevOps. As organization scales, they may need more environments and can create tens or even hundreds of clusters to host their workloads. Even with tools like Terraform, which allow you to reuse modules, it becomes hard to maintain as we scale, as we may have different pipelines for networking, environments, observability, security, each with distinct state stores that don't offer a central view. On top of that, we may have a different pipeline for Kubernetes manifest, for Helm charts, we can have different versions, which increase the risk of failures or downtime or increase operations to move for new clusters. But even at that point, we may have a nice pipeline and when we press the button, everything works, but what happens if, so if, if something goes wrong or if drift happened? How we can help with these situations? The response is moving from pipeline to API. And why don't you use open source tools like Kubernetes, which has already all the foundations needed to manage API? It has an API handler, it has hairbag built in, it has admission controllers that helps control what's getting and out, it has schema validation, it has a huge ecosystem of tools that can help add all the new functionalities. One state stored that represents the actual state of all objects managed by Kubernetes. Kubernetes also allows us to extend it with our own logic by creating custom resources. We are not using Kubernetes for its workload management here, but for its API management. We can rely on SEK AWS controller for Kubernetes to create AWS resources by declaring custom resources stored in Kubernetes. We have one SEK controller for each AWS services like EC2, IAM, EKS, Secret Manager, F3, and so on. The ID is using a management EKS clusters that will be able to create AWS resources in other account or region if needed. If we deploy those resources with Helm or kubectl, how we can link them together? What happens if I need to retrieve the output of the VPC created before creating my EKS clusters? For that, we will need another layer of abstraction. We can rely on Crow, a new open source project created by AWS and donated to the community to rely on Kubernetes API management, allowing us to create new composable abstraction RGD for resource graph definitions. These abstractions help us hide away complexity and we can declare simple interface with a lot of same default values. We also need a way to be able to reuse output from some components before creating other components. We need to retrieve the VPC ID before creating the EKS clusters or we need to know the IAM role to use for creating these EKS clusters. Let's see how we can leverage Crow and SEK together to create composable abstractions to create our infrastructure component with VPC and EKS clusters to run our application. With Crow, we can extend Kubernetes and define our own custom resource dynamically with just YAML. Extending our previous solutions using only ACK, we can build composable abstraction on top of it, VPC and EKS clusters. And on top of those two resource graph definitions, we can also have another abstraction layer, which is named the EKS cluster with VPC, that allows us to link the VPC resources with the EKS cluster resources. And then we can create one instance of these new resources named workload clusters. Let's see how can this works in a short demo. 
In this demo, we are starting with an existing management cluster configured with Crow and SEK. We have already created the EKS cluster with VPC, resource graph definitions using Crow, and we are going to instantiate the workload clusters using a new minimal API definition with same default. We are also using GitOps with Argo CD, which will register the newly created staging clusters and install Kubernetes addons and then deploy your workloads applications. Let's start it. We first open our Argo CD UI in the management clusters to see what objects are defined. For now, we are defined a cluster applications and a cluster addons applications. Those points to different application sets, but there is no instance of those applications because for now we, have, we have, don't have any spoke clusters to deploy to. Let's see how it is into the EKS console into the workload clusters. For now, there is no cluster, so we need to create it by instancing our RGD. Let's do this. Come back to the Git repository, just uncomment the file in our tenant kubecon1. We define the account ID, management ID, Kubernetes versions. We just put this, in, put this into Git, and then Crow will detect and start to creating our VPC and our EKS clusters into our workload one cluster uh, address uh, account. We see that workload cluster one is detected. We can see that we have an EKS clusters with VPC object, which is created into our management uh, EKS clusters. It has an active state for now. Now we can see what is the VPC, uh, which was created by these resources. So we go to VPC. We can see that we have a workload cluster one VPC, which is already successfully reconciled. So it is deployed correctly. And now looking at the EKS clusters RGD, which is statute in progress. Let's validate this into our AWS console, and we can see that the workload is creating. Let's come back 15 minutes later when the EKS clusters is totally created. Then we can see that application set starts to create applications for our workload cluster ones and start to deploy add-ons like the EFS CSI driver, external secrets, ACK controllers, which will be deployed into our staging spot clusters workload cluster one. As we speak, we are deploying the SEK EKS controller into the workload cluster one. What we want to do now that we have our addons correctly deployed into our clusters, we will want to deploy our applications, creating namespace and deploying our front end and back end applications. We go back to our Git repository. We update our manifest to allow staging environments to be created for the namespace, the web store front end and the web store back end. We commit this into Git and let Argo CD reconcile it and Argo CD start to deploy your applications into the cluster. Let's refresh the UI and let's see how it's happened. So the syncing is in progress. We can see that the namespace started to create namespace for our workload cluster once and starting to deploy the backend applications and the frontend applications. And now we can connect to the UI of these applications, which will expose a service with a network load balancer. We can active access this uh, network load balancer's U uh, URL and just connect to our workload. And can see that just with Crow, SEK, and Argo CD, we managed to deploy our application. Call to actions. If you want to know more, you can visit the Crow website and you can find the code of the solutions we showcase in the Crow GitHub project. Thank you for your interest and come join us on the Crow project.